Hi everyone, Mr. Hamilton here, and we're just picking up our conversation on adding and subtracting radicals now. If radicals are called like radicals, it means that they have the same number under the radical symbol. So when we add or subtract, we simplify each radical as much as possible, then we add or subtract only like radicals, only the ones that have the same number under the radical symbol. So let's look at this first one, 9 root 7 minus 3 root 7. They have the same radical, the same number under the radical symbol, and so that means that I can go ahead and I can subtract the coefficient. Because just think about this for a second. If I gave you 9x minus 3x, well, you would say, well, that's 6x. Likewise, with radicals, we say 9 root 7 minus 3 root 7 is 6 root 7. The, the root 7 and root 7 don't cancel out. It's just, like, it's just like we had a variable there. And so that's what we need to get in our mind as we're adding these together. So let's do another example here, 5 root 8 plus 3 root 18 minus 2 root 2. Well, we've seen root 8 before. We know that root 8 is the same thing as 4 times 2. And we know that square root of 4 is just 2. And then if I go up and I go to the second term now, 3 root 18, this is the same thing as 3 root 9 times 2. And we know that 9 is just the square root of 9 is 3. And then we're left with root 2 still under the radical symbol. And then over here we have minus 2 root 2. So don't forget to do all the terms here. It may be more helpful to do the entire first line before you go down. But uh, I just wanted to look at one step at a time there. So now I'm going to say, well, I can't simplify this. So this is just 2 root 2. And so 5 times 2 is 10. So I have 10 root 2 plus 9 root 2. 3 times 3 is 9, minus 2 root 2. And now what I can do, because these are all the same radicals, I can look at this and I say, well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just do the math with the coefficients. The 10, the 9, and the minus 2, or the negative 2. 10 plus 9 is 19, minus 2 is 17. And that gives me 17 root 2. The property that we've used here is this property, c times the square root of a times d times the square root of b, we multiply the c times the d, and we multiply the a times the b. So c, d, and then a times b under the square root. That's the property that we've used. So if you remember, the ultimate goal today really is to be able to simplify things that look even uglier than that, that has a fraction involved. And so with that in mind, let's go ahead and try to simplify the following. 6 minus root 18 divided by 3. Well, how do we do that? Well, we go ahead and we subtract... The, what's under the radical, we try to take out the largest uh, perfect square, while root 18 is 9 times 2. And 9, we know the square root of 9 is 3, so we're just left with root 2 divided by 3. Well, that might not look like it simplifies much, but if you notice here, I've got 6 has a common factor of, or has a factor of 3. 3 has a, com has a factor of 3, and then the 3 in the denominator has a factor of 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to common factor a 3 out of the first two terms. I'm going to take a 3 out, and be left with 2 minus 1 root 2. Think about it. If you expand that back in, just like we did a little while ago in the last video, uh, 3 times 2 gives you 6. 3 times 1 root 2 means you multiply the 3 times the 1. That gives you minus 3, and you're left with a root 2. So that works. And then on the bottom... We're just dividing by 3. So if you go 3 divided by 3, that cancels out to give you 1 over 1. And what you're left with is 2 minus 1 root 2, which is the same thing as 2 minus root 2. And that's really helpful in what we're going to do with the quadratic formula tomorrow. Let's look at one more example here. 4 plus root 80 divided by 4. Well, what is root 80? You could do this off to the side if you wanted. You could go root 80 is equal to... Oh, okay, can I take... 4 out. Yep. Can I take bigger than 4 out though? And you keep working your way up. 4, 9, no, not 9, uh, 16. And what you'll find here is that the biggest perfect square that we can take out is in fact 16. So this is root 16 times 5. Again, if you had done it like this, if you'd said, oh, I can take a 4 out, that would have worked as well because you would have 4 root 20. Um, and then in that case, you would have gotten 2 root 20, which is uh, 4 times 5. And we got equal to 2 times 2 root 5, and that would have given you 4 root 5. If you had seen 16 right from the get-go, you would have gotten the square root of 16 is 4, 
and you'd be left with the root 5. So either way, we get the same answer. All right, so that's what we arrive at. So we get 4 plus 4 root 5 over 4. And then if we go ahead and we common factor the 4 out, I get 1 plus 1 root 5. Same reason for the, as common factoring for the last example. If my pen would work, that would really help. And then we're dividing by 4. Well, 4 divided by 4 cancels out to give us 1 over 1. So this can be just written as 1 plus 1 root 5 or 1 plus root 5. And so this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to simplify it to something much simpler, as we're going to do with the quadratic formula tomorrow. So consider yourself uh, practicing this skill, and we're going to apply this with one of the most famous formulas in math come tomorrow's lesson.